that out in our... If we do a next offline event, we have to invite those two players again to see if Nimsh really can bench press one egg up. One egg up? Not two? Well, maybe two. Who knows? So yeah, guys, that might be upcoming in the future. Absolutely. So you need to stop your file again because Timo <laughs> di didn't listen to our commands and we didn't even say, game is starting now, Timo. You can start. Those games are recorded. This show is live. We got Nimsh versus Mirari and it's handlock for Nimsh versus a druid. We Well, let's just say a ramp druid, mid-rangey. We don't know yet. We don't know yet. We don't know anything, actually, if what, they pl what the players have for decks. I got all deck lists on my PC. But I'm not spoilering myself, so I'm as surprised as you guys if you see anything crazy in those players' decks. And we see a Sunwalker for Nimsh, which is yeah, a new thing. We don't have that every day in a handlock. That's true. Sunwalker is possible. You can play the handlock a bit more beefy. For example, a lot of players leave those Twilight Drake out sometimes or just play them additionally. There can be only one Shadow Flame, one Hellfire, and you just put two bigger minions in. Don't play any Mortal Coils. As we know, Nimsh doesn't like Mortal Coils a lot. In his Zulok, he hasn't played one. Well, later he put in one for some s nice combos. And uh, Savannah's too. So Savannah, Ooh. Shadow Flame, some nice combos. Nimsh is playing the rather beefy version of a Handlock with even more legendaries or bigger minions than just those giants. So yeah, and if you are asking yourself, why don't you run Twilight Drakes anymore? Or... Why do we see versions where we don't have them in? It's because yeah, there are more and more shamans upcoming and the Earthshock is the hard counter to any, yeah, any uh, Twilight Drake. That's correct. Earthshock is so annoying if you play your Twilight Drake and you lose it instantly. But not only against the shaman, also those druids, they have the Keeper of the Grove. So if you see turn 4, Keeper Innovate Hero Ability, or not only Hero Ability, there's just a Harvest Golem, you lose your minion instantly. Well, there is now a 4-2 for Nimsh on the board, but Mirari has his Harvest Golem out. Or even a Ras, so he could just Ras for the card draw and use his ability. Take the more damage. The problem is, you kind of want to have your Ras and your Swipe to kill a Giant. If you really need to do it, it would hurt yourself, but sometimes you need to use everything you have to kill those Giants. But as we see, Nimsh, he has a Sunwalker, he has Savannahs, but... There's only a Molten Giant, so no Mountains, no Twilight Rex, if he even plays them. I need, I need really need to look at his deck list. It looks extremely potent what he's playing here. It's interesting, to say the least. Next turn, he can coin out his Sunwalker, which is a potential play, or even coin out Sylvanas, which gives you a lot of board control, and he's not even life-tapping. Well, he's on 20. Yeah. If he life-taps further, he will drop down next turn to 18. If Mirari is charging up his Druid of the Claw, he would drop down to 14 already. One of the main problems why he didn't use it is, of course, he is at 9 cards. So the next card he would draw would burn a card. He doesn't want that and he wants to keep his coin for a potential Sunwalker play next turn. Well, there we see oh, two Molten Giants. <laughs> this is strong. The only problem is they're slightly too expensive. <laughs> he could burn himself to play those two Giants with the coin, but he cannot taunt him up, and it's too risky. With just one roar, Mirari could win. So we might see Molten Giant coin Sunwalker, but it's already turn 5. So turn 6 is the next one, and there's always the danger of a Black Knight. And if a Black Knight is happening, if, if you play your Molten Giant, and then a Black Knight is happening, you're absolutely screwed. That's true. I think he's going to coin out the Sunwalker. That's, that's even better for him if there wasn't that one Keeper of the Grove upcoming. So Mirari <laughs> can just silence the Sunwalker and deal another 6 damage if he wants to, to the face. The most annoying thing about that play is just, well, you can do it, but double giants are what is Nim just going to play next turn. Well, he drops down to 8 and he has Selna swipe on his end, so that's another 5 damage to the face. Does he play him? Would surprise me, because one Shadow Flame clears the board entirely, except for the 2-1 small harvest, harvest machine that comes out of the Golem. That's the one thing that's good for Mirari, 
and annoying for Nims, even if he has, even if he does the Shadow Flame, as you say. Yeah, he, he can destroy. Well, he can destroy. And the 2-3 and flame. then Shadow Flame, he clears the board. So that's a possible play for Nims next turn. The big question is just, is he going to drop his Thalnus or not? He doesn't need to. He can just keep it for next turn for the power swipe and just deal 7 damage now. He brings him down to... Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, he trades here to just prevent what we said or what you said. He really doesn't want to see, yeah, that one Shadow Flame. And now Nimsh could drain his HP to go for Double Giant plus Sun Fury Protector plus Soulfire if he wants to, to get rid of that 2-4. He, he could also just drop both Giants and put a Sun Fury Protector in between. Like... It's only a difference between having two 8-8 eight, eight Giants or 9-9 nine, nine Giants. Yeah, he, well, he doesn't need to drain his HP, but he could have if he wanted. And there's still the potential of maybe going for a Soul Fire, but he doesn't even need to do that. Next turn, there's a Phasis Manipulator for the Giants. He actually has lethal next turn if there is no Taunt and the Giants stay alive. Well, there's a Phasis Manipulator for Mirari too, but as we know... A siphon soul is in his hand, so this is going to be devastating for Mirari. And he doesn't even need a siphon soul, though there is a shadow if he if he goes for a shadow flame, so that that could be a play. Mm. I, I would siphon soul go for the face. Maybe No. Yeah, no that's, just that's just it. Siphon Soul go for the face. Kill phase. the Cellness with the two three. Then Mirari is down to ten. And he still has Leroy Shadow, f uh, Leroy Soulfire. So, definite play here. Yeah, that's enough damage to go crazy in the next turns. And that one Siphon Soul was really annoying for Mirari. Since you you had a good move, so you had your Faceless Manipulator. In the end, it turned out to be well useless since there was the Siphon Soul. Pretty strong card for him. Even with his silence, it would have been devastating for Mirari. There could have been silence, attack, and then still Shadow Flame after the attack. Oh, du wow. <laughs> Double White Crows. That feels kind of useless in this situation. Kinda feels completely useless. It's the worst cards he could have drawn. He can at least swipe one giant and uh, trade with him. Argus up the Harvest Machine. But that's... <laughs> Eight damage still in the next turn. Plus Leroy, plus Soulfire. So game. Game. I don't see him surviving. He could taunt up his both minions, but well what's what's the use? It's not gonna help anyway. So he can he can double white grows, but yeah, there are just those two giants, so there is nothing he can actually do to not get nimshed. He loses, Nimsh wins, ready to go. We got for Mirari, Shaman, and maybe Handlock himself. I guess we're going to see a Shaman. As yeah. we know, those silences, hexes, everything to deal with Nim's stuff could be possible. It's strong, but Nimsh has a, has a really great version against Shamans. As we already said, there are no Twilight Drakes. Well, the silence is still useful against yeah, the 4-5 against the four five Sunwalker, but... It's not. <laughs> he drops a rock biter weapon, gets a rock biter weapon. That was a quite unfortunate redraw for Mirari here. So you can. Oh, there's, there is a Twilight Drake. So Nimsh is not only playing Sunwalkers, he's also playing Twilight Drakes. But this time he has. Well, wow. So you lied to us? That's rather the perfect hand for Nimsh. It is. So Mountain Giant, double Sunwalker, <laughs> double Twilight Drake, Ancient Watcher 2. So from turn 4 on, Nimsh can just put down Giant, Twilight Drake, Twilight Drake. Then Sunwalker, that's that's super strong, and there is only one hex for Mirari, so he can he can get rid of a giant. If he's not redrawing an Earthshock, this is looking well, extremely not so good for him. But there's still two t two cards to be drawn by him, and it could turn out that he gets what he needs. Let's see if he gets an Earthshock. Really wants it. Well, uh, it's a lightning bolt. Well, double lightning bolt rock biter kills a giant if he really wants to, or double lightning bolt or lightning bolt rock biter plus a wolf would kill a giant too if he's not just hexing it. That's interesting. Oh, he has Selnus double lightning bolt also. So yeah, <laughs> if it's he just immediately kill. If he wants to, he can just vaporize a giant with his hand cards. It's not even necessary to hex here. But the first thing you always want to do is just hex to not overload yourself. Of course, so crazy. But we see Nimsh is 
next Twilight Drake, next turn, next Twilight Drake, and then the Sunwalkers are following. This is going to be some crazy game by Nims. Do you think he's going to put down another Twilight Drake? Well, I'm think I, I think he will just throw it on Sunwalker. Could be. Or just a Twilight Drake with Ancient Watcher, maybe? Twilight Drake with Sunfury Protector. Yeah, so some to, to just get some taunts up, so that could be possible. But Silent, uh, as you said, a, a Sunwalker itself is a taunt already, so that yeah. could be possible. Two mm -hmm. taunts, of course, stronger than one, so we will see Twilight Sunfury. Yeah, I agree here, and if he goes Twilight Sunfury, he can just Soulfire and already has two taunters out. If he's not playing the Sun Fury and he does a Soul Fire on the Azur Drake, for example, he could just lose his one minion to taunt other stuff up. So he loses his Sunwalker, but that's fine. He still has another one. He has two Ancient Watchers plus a Defender of Argus and a Mole Giant. Yep. Looks good for Nimsh so far. And we have some. Well, Mirari is really not drawing mm. what he needs here. And he has a Wind Fury. Well, he has a Wind Fury, but. What the heck? That's not gonna use him anything at the moment. He has he has two Twilight Drakes at against him and no Earth Shock, and this is extremely annoying. And the time when you lose against a Handlock easy as a Shaman, just having no Earth Shock in your hand. He tried to redraw one, but he just got the Rock Biter back. He tried to Mulligan. Oh, and Nimsh, Nimsh can just trade, go for the face, and even drop more. So. We we might just see a Sunwalker, or uh, Urzan Ring Farseer uh, healing one of his Drakes up. I think you go should go for the Sunwalker, right now because if you play the Molten Giant now, it, there's just the counterplay with a uh, with a big game hunter, for example. Well, I would expect him to maybe heal up his four three, to not die to a Lightning Storm. So a Lightning Storm would kill two minions maybe. You can just heal him up with your Ozone Ring and additionally drop an Ancient Watcher if you want to. Or just go for the Molten Giant, also possible play. You just got that 8-8 Elf. If no big game hunter is coming, that's next turn just 10-18 damage. There's the Earth Shock, finally. But it feels kind of late since you lost so much to those two Giants. But Earth Shock plus Lightning Bolt is going to clear a lot on this board. Yeah, and of course... Your Unbound Elemental will go up to 4-6. Well, if he flies two Lightning Bolts, that's not necessarily going to happen. He would love to have a Lightning Storm. With a Lightning Storm, he could just vaporize those two minions and maybe deal four damage to the Molten Giant to, well, Unbound. next turn, kill it away. But I guess Unbound... Spirit Wolves. Spirit Wolves. Oh, uh, well... I would have felt better with a Lightning Bolt on the 4-3. Now the 4-3 can just trade with a 2-3. And you, you just played him... Well, yeah, you played him and they, they are taunters. But it feels worse than just killing away the Twilight Drake. Even if your Unbound dies from the Molten Giant, I guess it would have still been better to snipe away the Drake. Now it can just do what it wants. Kill one of your wolves. Well... Well, if or we don't see more taunts, he could have lethal next turn. He has Rockbiter, Wind Fury, Double Lightning Bolt, so he goes up to 10 damage. If he only kills one taunt, it's 14 damage in the face. But we see Shadow Flame well, never incoming mind. on Ancient Watcher, just vaporizing the board, trade away, and 12 damage incoming from Nims here, and down to 16 for Mirari. Next turn, that's 12 again. Within Defender of Argus, that's 14. At the moment, it's looking grim for Mirari. But as you said, there is another Rockbiter. If he gets his Yeti to survive, and not only his Yeti, if there would be the one Stalinus on the board surviving, it would be so much damage to kill Nimsh. So Rockbiter Winfrey already kills Nimsh here, but there is Leroy in his hand. So with Leroy, he has... Oh, did, did Nims just miss Lethal? He had Leroy plus Defender of Argus. Yep, That would be it. 16 damage, if I'm correct. Wow, Nims. Well, it, he still wins at the moment. If there's a silence for Mirari now, he could win. Okay, uh, let's, let's, let's calculate. He can Lightning Bolt the 4-5. Attack. Has. He has one minor to less. 
He could lightning bolt to break the shield. No, no, wait, 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 wait. You can lightning bolt break the shield. Trade with Twain. With Leroy, for example. Yeah, he has to trade with Leroy. And then you rock by the Wind Fury, and that's only 14 damage, and you're exactly one mana too short to do what you want to do. If he had one mana more, he could double rock by the Wind Fury, but like this is not going to work. There's just rock by the Wind Fury, and that's not enough. So in, in my opinion, he should have just played the turn with the Spirit Wolves different, not play him, snipe away the 4-3. And then it would have looked slightly better for him. He could have played the Spirit Wolves afterward. Well, maybe they would have...